morning guys welcome to day two of the Icarus race I just woke up on this couch uh, the plan for this morning is slightly undecided the thing is I'm headed south and right now we have a south wind on the ground at least it's actually kicking enough that it should make my launch easy but a direct headwind would suck the whole way but I checked the forecast and much like yesterday Apparently up around 10,000 feet, we get a tailwind. Now apparently the higher you go, the more tailwind you get, but spending an hour or so at like 13,000 feet gets a little bit sketchy because of hypoxia. My plan is to just get really high and check my tailwind, see how fast I'm going. If I can maximize efficiency, I'll have to overlay a map so you guys see what I'm talking about. I might try to get to an airport that's like 160 miles away. If not, I have a point in the middle that's like my decision time around 90 miles. I got my strobe set up so I can launch before sunrise. Although I'm not really pushing it super hard because it's still pretty dark 30 minutes before sunrise. So basically I'm gonna get all my gear on and get up whenever I get up. So let's send it, see how far we get today. Oh yeah, looking hot. I just noticed the freaking wind burn on my face. All right, last check. I think I grabbed everything. All my belongings. This place is super nice. Shout out to this airport. Oh, I'll show you guys real quick. So navigation, I'm using this app, Avair. It's kind of like four flight, but it's free. So this is the airport I'm trying to get to, McCarley. So if I long press on that, I can set a route. All I have to do is pull my phone out and I found out how to swipe with my nose to unlock it so I don't have to take my glove off. And I just follow this line. So that's rad. I just preset that and shove my phone back in here. So that's ready to go. All right, strobe situation. We're gonna turn that on. Motor, gonna prime it. I'm just gonna give it a little pop because it's, it's been sitting in the cold all night. Shit, I need to do my tracker. So one of the parts of this race is we carry this satellite tracker and it's for safety and to make sure no one cheats, but it's also so they all know our intentions. So I'm sending a departure message and then I go in here, hit send, and it takes a little while to send. I've realized there's really a different technique to launching with this much gear. The thing is, you really wanna do it one shot because yesterday, when I had to set up again, it really, really sucked. With all this weight I'm packing and the under seat reserve, you can't rush it. You gotta do it slow, controlled, hands are already numb. Now it's time for the last part of my spacesuit. The gloves. Alright. We're officially ready. I'm gonna take a quick breather. We'll get ready to go. Best launch so far. I got that technique. Woohoohoo! Gonna pull out my phone. Currently, I'm at 5,000 feet and I got 15 knots, which is very slow. So, hopefully, by the time I get up higher, I'm gonna have a better tailwind. But I'll keep checking back on that. The sun's not quite up yet. If I'm gonna reach that really far gas stop, which is an airport, I'm gonna stay trimmed in for maximum efficiency and just go way up high and hopefully get that tailwind and go for a really long, fast flight. That's the goal at least. If I fall short because there's not enough tailwind, I'll end up hopefully just going to that first gas stop. All right, so 6,000 feet, 23 knots, doing a little bit better. By the way, I don't think I really explained my fuel bladder situation that much. What I got going on, it's an MSR bladder made for water, but basically it runs into the tank and 
The most important part is that you have a solid vent out of your tank. After I burn six liters of gas, I can open up the little spigot, set my bladder up, and it just starts flowing by gravity. If it needs a little help, I flip it so that the low end is the spigot. But so far it's been working extremely well. Climb rate is definitely slower up here at altitude and with all this weight. I'm perfectly on track. What I do is I make the needle centered and then I pick a point on the horizon that's uh, straight ahead and then I just fly there. And that normally keeps me pretty well in line. I can also kind of see the topography on the map and then I can relate it to where a mountain is up here <clears throat> and know which way of the peak I have to pass. So I'm at 7,600 feet, 29 knots, my speed is improving. All right, we're getting into more tailwind, I think. 8,327 feet and 35, 34 knots. I'm hoping to see some better numbers up at 10. I think I would push to 12. I don't know, 11 or 12. The thing is, I've been up to 15,000, but I was only there for like a few minutes and then I started descending. And sitting at higher altitudes, over an extended period of time, like an hour or two, that can set in hypoxia where you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain. And the bad thing about hypoxia is there's really no signs to tell you it's happening. Your mind just kind of drifts away and then they just like pass out until they hopefully descend and wake back up. So we don't want that to happen. Sun's starting to push up over there. If I don't start seeing some pretty big numbers from the tailwind, I might have to choose my closer gas stop. Check that out. Lighting up the cloud layer above me. Still on track. I'm getting 37 knots at 9,400 feet. 34, 35, 37. I'm gonna keep pressing higher, probably a little bit over 10,000. Uh, but I think I'm going to shut the GoPro down in just a second once the sun pops out. It should be freaking majestic. It's hitting over there. There it is. Beautiful. Hopefully that sun warms me up a little bit. I'm going to sign off. I'm just going to cruise this way and we'll see where I end up. So I just filled up the scout. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like still slightly shivering. That was like, every flight I feel like it just gets colder and colder. Obviously I didn't make it all the way to that airport I was hoping I would make it to, but I got this perfect little gas station that has plenty of room to launch in. I'm gonna head into this little store, hopefully pick up some hot food for breakfast, and then we'll plan the route, mix the fuel, and get back up in the air. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I'm all fueled up. Oil's mixed. Ate some breakfast. Got some coffee. Took a little while longer than I hoped, but I feel much better. I'm not cold anymore. That's the gas station. Beautiful facility friendly people. I don't know why the Google reviews were so low. Ah, figures. I gotta lay my wing out again. The good news is I do have wind to hopefully make things easier. I'm doing the old launch without the gloves and then put them on later trick because I feel like if it 
increases my chances of nailing the launch. And all I have to do is come off of power for a little bit once I'm up to put my glove on. That's not so bad. All that's left is my bag. There we go. Gonna freaking nail it. That's the spirit, right? Oh, I can't wait to get off the ground. All right. I feel a little bit of wind. Let's send her. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, what a rush. This is some of the most challenging flying I've ever done when it comes to launches and landings. So when you nail that launch, uh, it's golden. I'm gonna pull out my phone and just get my heading situated. Woo! My heart's pounding from that launch. Let's see what we got. All right, so here's my game plan. One of the airports I had hoped I could get to wasn't, it's not actually doable. It's Class E surface airspace, which I'm not allowed to fly in. I don't know how I missed that. I've got myself a checkpoint right at the edge of the Class E airspace that I'm hoping to get to that point and still have enough fuel to make it another, I don't know, 30 some miles. If not, my alternate is right in the middle. The overall flight to this gas station is about 130 something miles. I'm really hoping as long as I can optimize my tailwind, I will be able to make this long distance. I'm already at 30 knots and only 5,800 feet. So I'm just gonna keep climbing until I can optimize my tailwind. But yeah, hopefully the GoPro lasts and I can get this landing on film also. I kept it in my pocket just to warm it up while I got coffee. Which by the way, for truck stop coffee, that was well deserved. That was like, spend three hours sitting at 10,000 feet with a 30 mile an hour breeze in your face. And then just to get that coffee, that was the best. All right, I'm gonna sign off on the GoPro to save battery and we'll pick up hopefully somewhere over there. This should be interesting. I've decided to not go all the way because I got to my decision point and decided that it's not worth the risk of trying to push it super far and uh, run out of gas when I know I can stop somewhere and get gas uh, and then just keep going. But this airport has X's on either side of the runway, which means it's the runway is closed. Hopefully that's not an issue for me because obviously I don't need the runway unless it's for some reason uh, other than like they're doing construction on the tarmac, which is what it looks like they're doing. Well, apparently I missed my landing because the GoPro died again, but we are here, the smooth landing with nice little bit of wind. And look at this perfect little fuel farm. I only have to fill up my main tank, so this should be a really quick stop and then I should have plenty of gas to make the run all the way to my other gas station. Please excuse the ninja mask, but I just fueled up. I'm gonna go see if this building's open and maybe there's a bathroom in it. Then we're just gonna launch and do some more flying. I gotta plan out the next flight a little bit better, but we'll be set, ready to go. Mission complete, check this out. Scout is getting gnarly dirty. I ordered a gasket to fix that leak before I left, but it didn't get there in time. So I'm getting all this spray everywhere. We got fuel drippage. My duct tape job is actually holding up really well. I mean, normally I don't think duct tape works in that amount of force, but it's working. My next leg is only 80 miles uh, to a gas station. And then from there, I'm hoping to make it almost into the salt flats tonight. I'm gonna go for the reverse. We'll get up in the air 
and just cruise. This one I gotta go around a lake for some airspace, but it's all right, do what you gotta do. We're gonna send it. just arriving at my gas stop that was a very grueling flight the whole flight was about 80 miles uh, but I didn't have a very good tailwind and some of it I had a headwind for so it took a long time and I was hitting a lot of turbulence the whole way it was a lot of active piloting and my back sore my shoulders sore but this is where we're going I don't think this is a very good spot to stay the night and it's coming up on 4 o'clock so I'm going to need to situate uh, down there figure out where I'm going to spend the night and get there tonight before the sun sets oh no way I can see the sign says fuel and food I'm so hungry I ate breakfast but I didn't eat any lunch I don't see any flags. I see power lines. This parking lot is like Craterville. Puddles everywhere. God, there's power lines all over this freaking place. Wait a second. I just want to look at this again. Oh shit, they have alpacas. So I wonder... If I can put it down on this road. This is where we're going. <sighs> hey, we made it. And I didn't run out of gas. That's rad. Yeehaw! just a little hike to get over there and I did come in into the wind now this looks like a solid place to launch all right I'm gonna power off the camera I'm gonna go over to the fuel pumps hopefully get a bite to eat and decide where I'm going after this I don't really care if it's far I just want to get somewhere that's gonna be comfortable to spend the night I officially landed in the middle of nowhere. I fueled up, I still have to mix my oil, but I got some food. I got a bunch of things because I don't really know where I'm going tonight. I have to pick a spot that I might be able to camp at because I don't really want to camp at a gas station. We might try to find an airport, even if it doesn't have fuel, just to get to and hopefully have better facilities to camp at. So I'm gonna eat and mix my oil and then I'm gonna figure out where I can go to next and then we'll launch. Hopefully I make it look good. That's how you do it. <laughs> Woo! That felt good. That was fucking money. Let me go ahead and explain the situation I just had. Oh god. Maybe I should catch my breath first. Woo! Well, I am incredibly stoked to have just nailed that. So here's the deal. I sat down after I ate some food. And I tried to point out where I need to go next. Now the problem is, it's 5.16. Sunset is in exactly two hours. And I need to get somewhere that I can sleep. 
I'm in that I can get fuel for the morning. My only options after this are gas stations. That's all right, but I really don't want to camp at a gas station. So I mapped out, um, I'm going to Jackpot, Nevada. Everyone always says I say Nevada wrong, it's Nevada. We might get there when it's a little bit dark. Currently, I have an ETA of two hours and 35 minutes, which puts me right at my uh, minimum of half an hour after sunset, or maximum rather, I guess. But I'm gonna keep climbing up high and hopefully get a little bit more speed. I think I'm gonna have to use speed bar on this run to make it by sunset. So prepare for a dark landing over at uh, Jackpot. I'm gonna turn off the GoPro and do some pilotage navigational shit and put my gloves on and I'll catch back up with you guys once we get a bit closer. Got the GoPro started. All right, we are just rolling up on, uh, what was it called, Jackpot. And so far, this plan has worked extraordinarily well. I'm like five minutes away, and the sun sets like five minutes away from setting. However, here is the other concern. Basically, Jackpot is pretty far, getting a little turbulence here, it's pretty far west. I'm not taking the most straight line approach. However, this airport, if everything works in my favor, will have an FBO or a little pilot lounge like the place I stayed at last night. My goal is to find somewhere to stash my motor and then walk to the gas station with my bladder, fill that up, and I'll probably have to make two trips to fill my tank and then the bladder. Other than that, they have, I think, a couple bars uh, in this town, I would assume a gambling town is going to have somewhere to get a nice hot dinner. This flight was actually really nice. I didn't have too much of a tailwind, but it was relatively calm. That flight earlier, when I, w I think I launched at like noon and went until maybe 3, that was some rowdy air. And it's just, it's, you know like when you're driving a car for hours on end, your body starts to hurt and you gotta shift yourself and everything starts aching. Sitting here, I have to reach up, grab the tip line, sometimes grab both tip lines, do my little weight shift dance, and it got really strenuous. I don't know, that flight wasn't that cold, but that one really sucked. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's not the most beautiful shot on the GoPro straight into the sunlight, but there's a town out there. On a side note, I've become really good at operating my phone with just my nose because I hate to take my gloves off and freeze my hand. I'm like sending chats to Jacqueline, like one word responses with my nose. Pretty rad. Oh yeah, do they have a high rise? You know, this airport has X's on it too. Maybe they're doing construction on the runway too. I see a flashing yellow light and I see the wind sock. The wind is blowing directly that way. Yeah, it looks like they're doing construction on the runway. I feel like I should look both ways on the runway, but this runway's like torn up. What's up guys? <laughs> Good thing I don't need a runway. Well, there's a police car right there. Hopefully I don't get in any trouble. Fair enough. My lines got tangled in my strobe again. I think that's just the reality these days. See, this is the whole, oh shit, there's a cat. No way. Um, yeah, this is the whole adventure side of things, I guess, because I don't really have much knowledge of this area. I just know there's a gas station somewhere that I should be able to get to. Yeah. 
Yep. A little bit of snag point action. Turn my strobe off. Oh, I feel so light. It's glorious. The scout is dirty, but running like a top. Oh yeah, all right. So I'm gonna send my tracker message. Send. And they receive the message. They will know that I'm alive. I'm gonna shut the GoPro off. I'm gonna wander around, see if I can uh, figure out where I might be able to stay. That looks like an FBO over there. We'll check it out. Maybe I'll talk to the police. But I'm going to leave all my heavy stuff here. So let's go do that. Well, this patrol car is completely empty. Uh, over here, we got a couple signs. So we got courtesy cars free, tie downs free, no mechanic. I'm going to see if that code might open the door. One, two, two, five. Nope. That's a bummer. Could totally sleep in there on the floor. Alright, so this place seems pretty abandoned. I tried the combo for the door a whole bunch of times. Didn't get anything. Uh, the number... It's after hours, but it went to a voicemail, so... They used to have fuel, apparently, and there's a giant fuel tank over here, but I assume it's, like, for the town people. I don't really know what the plan is now, because I can try to camp here. I don't know if anyone's gonna bother me. Like, this is a relatively populated area, but if I try to go to the hotel, I have to, like, stash my gear somewhere and hope no one snags it. At least if I'm sleeping here, I'm close to it. I'm just going to walk around and see if I can find a good spot to maybe hide away and sleep. And then I have to run down the street for gas. It's 0.4 miles away, and I have to do that twice. But I also want to get food, so it'll be a long night, but worth it. So I might have just lucked out. I called up the hotel that's down the street. It's like 0.7 miles away and asked him if he knew of anyone with a pickup truck that could pick me up from the airport. And he actually has a guy um, and he said he can tell him to call me and he can be here in 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna get all my gear together. I'm gonna try to get it over that fence, which is gonna be a pain, but I guess this guy's gonna pick me up. Hopefully he can transport my gear over to the hotel. I can get a room tonight, uh, take a shower, get well rested, and I'll just have to walk from the hotel once I get settled in to get my gas and uh, get some food. But hopefully I'll be able to launch from the hotel in the morning. So pretty stoked. Let's uh, see if we can make this all happen. Yeah, dude, we got a ride. Check this out. Riding in the back of a pickup truck with my arm wrapped around the scout machine so she doesn't fall out. That would be a horrible end to the day. Yeah, dude. Gas station right over there. Looks like there should be plenty of places to eat. Steak and shrimp. What? Check this out. So I called the hotel. The hotel guy had a coworker, I guess, that had a truck. So he sent his buddy with the truck. He picked me up. I paid him 20 bucks to drive me here and paid $52 for the hotel. If I wanted to go with a cheaper one, I had to sleep upstairs, which means carrying my gear up there. But the guys were super helpful, helped me carry the motor in here. And uh, what's left is I need to go walk to the gas station and then hopefully between here and there, there's somewhere to get food. And uh, then I just got to plan the route for tomorrow. I don't know if you can tell, my face feels like it's stinging, but I'm so stoked to have a hot shower. Launch site for the morning, I might try to scope out. There's like the side road that runs east to west that looks like it should be doable, but I got to check it out in person or else I'm going to have to get a ride somewhere 
back to the airport or something. Let's get to the gas station, get some food, hopefully get to bed pretty soon so that I can get some sleep for tomorrow. So we got Chevron over there, and over here is apparently a restaurant. I'm gonna go in with my freaking fuel bladder, see if we can get some food, and then I'll fill up the bladder. All right, so update time. In the past couple hours, I got food, which was amazing, hot meal, and uh, ran back and forth to the gas station twice to fill up my bladder, to fill up the tank, and then the bladder again. All I gotta do is mix that oil, and then I might hit the shower, go to sleep. I know these videos probably lack a little B-roll, but it's kind of a mission in itself to do this kind of flying. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these episodes trying my best to add in a little pizzazz when I can. Yeah, tomorrow morning I have a launch like right outside the hotel that can only go one direction because it's a downhill deal and I can't really launch uphill. So the wind has to be either dead or up the hill. And if it's not, then I'm kind of screwed and I have to find a ride all the way to the airport because I don't think there's any other options. Tune in for tomorrow's episode and we'll see what happens with that launch. Hopefully I'll be wrapping around the bottom of Salt Lake by the end of tomorrow if everything goes as well as it's been going. So, pretty stoked. It's always an adventure. Freaking killing it out here. Till tomorrow's episode, hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out. Peace out.